Hello guys, welcome to the Parson series and this is part 4 of the cornea and we had done up till the bacterial corneal ulcer some of the important things that we require to understand the concept behind the corneal ulcer. So today we are going to start with the fungal corneal ulcer which is also called as the mycotic keratitis or fungal keratitis and usually we get this problem how to differentiate between the two. So this is uh, frequently seen in the tropical countries, the rural areas and a very important thing is immunocompromised state. So whenever I am dealing, uh, if you look in the Indian scenario, whenever I am dealing with the keratitis in the rural population or in the immunocompromised state, I am going to think about this fungal keratitis. So what are the causative organisms? So if you look at um, the causative organisms, the most important is your Aspergillus fusarium and the Candida albicans. Now if you remember, we have got two kind of fungus. One is your filamentous fungus, right? So it is actually the filamentous fungus which is more commonly causing this fungal corneal ulcers and in the filamentous Aspergillus is more common than fusarium. This is itself a MCQ. And uh, another important thing is your yeast-like fungus. So we also have the yeast-like fungus and the, in the yeast-like fungus, the common one is your Candida albicans, right? Now, what is the mode of infection? Usually it is occurring after the injury with the veggie table matter, a thorn, a wood stick and it's, it is having an indolent course. So what are the things that actually, you know, incline you towards a fungal keratitis whenever we have this vegetative matter. Vegetative matter could be your um, plant matter or it could be the animal matter. Animal matter may very, very common is the trauma with the animal tail. Plant material may, I can have thorns, I can have wood stick, stem, leaves, anything related to that. What are the symptoms compared to the bacterial ulcers? Symptoms are much more milder than the signs would suggest. So basically in the fungal corneal ulcers, signs are always more important than the symptoms. Whenever in the fungal keratitis, the signs are the most important things. Um, or uh, I can say that is, if a keratitis is there, the symptoms are of keratitis. A uh, person coming from rural background, vegetative matter trauma or the immunocompromised state and symptoms are very, very few. Always think of the fungal keratitis. F for fungal and F for few. Always remember F for fungal and F for few. Now, slow in these um, ulcers is dry in appearance, feathery borders. We have a yellow line of demarcation which is deepening into the gutter. So you see the raised margins. Then we can have a hypopion. It is always um, non-sterile, non-mobile because of the fungal hyphae. So these are the very, very important things with respect to the fungal corneal ulcer. Signs are much more. And the most peculiar thing that you have here is the absence of vascularization we have the absence of vascularization and it is due to this absence of vascularization it is dry looking it is um, grayish it is not having much of the pain it's uh, not having much of the symptoms but yes it has the finger like projections we have the finger like projections because we have got the hyphae in the fungus and due to this you will have multiple satellite lesions you have these hyphae extending into the hypopion so it is non-sterile it is uh, non-mobile it cannot move because of the extensions and this uh, is called as the ring of demarcation is called as immune ring of wesley another important thing uh, immune ring of wesley is visible and this is occurring due to the deposition of immune complexes and the inflammatory cells then multiple satellite lesions all these things are often asked in the mcq whenever you are having a ulcer with multiple satellite lesions with feathery margins um, with the raised edges dry looking grayish ulcer it's always significant for the fungal keratitis where signs are much more than the symptoms and again it is um, significant for the fungal keratitis we have a lot of ciliary and conjunctival congestion pain watering photophobia are less than in cases of the bacterial corneal ulcer so here i would like to emphasize this thing 
that it is not that we we will not have symptoms entirely in the fungal corneal ulcer it could be there that it is entirely symptomatic but don't take it that if you have symptoms it cannot be fungal corneal ulcer definitely you have to look for the other important signs also so yes definitely the signs are much less in comparison to the bacterial corneal ulcer so if you look here um, this is a fungal ulcer can you see it's very uh, dry looking grayish hair creamy exudate kind of a thing is there and yes hypopions usually big hair non sterile hai non mobile hai multiple satellite lesions bhi hai so what are the general complications general complications of corneal ulcer uh, though they are using the term general but uh, actually it is more with respect to the bacterial ulcer because these kind of um, complications are usually more in the bacterial corneal ulcer where we have lot of vascularization so if there is a superficial ulcerations they will commonly heal and you will get some amount of scarring but if it is deep the loss of the tissue will lead to the thinning of the entire cornea and um, at least when you are getting the site of the ulcer there you will have the marked thinning so that it bulges under the influence of the normal intraocular pressure so what is happening actually it will lead to the ectasia suppose this is your cornea here and this is the eyeball right so what is happening the area which is actually having the ulcer it may be protruded so it will be leading to the ectatic cicatrix now this is something different from the keratoseal or desmetoseal desmetoseal seal means cavity or herniation and in the desmens membrane so it is a desmetoseal Uh, due to the pneumococci or other septic organisms they are actually what is happening the ulcer is going into the deeper layers if you remember this was your um, anterior epithelium then we were having the bowman's membrane which was the condensation of this uh, stroma the thickest layer then uh, we have the predesmens membrane then we were having the desmens membrane and this was your endothelium so when we have this ulceration and it's going deeper 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 and once it reaches to this desmens membrane right the desmens membrane is offering great resistance to the inflammatory processes so it is however unable to support the intraocular pressure by itself and therefore it is herniating through the ulcer and that is forming the keratoseal or the desmetoseal so this uh, membrane is actually herniating so when it is herniating to prevent the uh, impending perforation this is actually called as the desmetoseal or the keratoseal this may persist surrounded by a white cicatricial ring and ultimately it can rupture if you have anything that is increasing the intra abdominal pressure intra abdominal pressure if there is anything which is increasing the intra abdominal pressure then we can have this perforation so see again a important thing here you are having a picture of um, the desmetoseal can you see here this transparent one is um, the desmetoseal and um, this is actually surrounded by this whitish area so this is your desmetoseal and uh, if something happens we have a increase in intraabdominal pressure at this time then it can frankly lead to the perforation also right perforation of an ulcer is used co usually caused by sudden exertion it could be coughing sneezing straining it could be a spasm of the orbicularis muscle and that is why whenever we have uh, done any intraocular surgery cataract surgery glaucoma surgery or the patient is having the impending perforations we will ask the patient not to do any strenuous work uh, not to lift any heavy weights um uh sneezing coughing this should be avoided give them some laxatives also give them some cough suppressants also so, uh, after such an activity uh, any such activity which is causing the rise in the blood pressure can also lead to the rise in intraocular pressure and uh, what will happen then then the weakest part of the floor will give away and there will be 
perforation. Now, once there is a perforation, what is present inside? Aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is coming out and now the intraocular pressure falls to the atmospheric level. So, when it is coming out, what it is bringing with it? If I have the corneal ulcer like this, so what is happening now? We have iris in lens. So, whole of this aqueous humor is coming out. So, this iris as well as this lens, okay. So, this iris and the lens being driven forward to come in the contact with this back of cornea. So, iris and the lens is also coming back. So, they are forming a ectasia. So, they are forming the ectatic cornea. So, if uh, that was your back here, so this iris is coming like this and the lens is also coming like this. So, this is forming your the bunch of grape-like appearance. That is why it is called as the staphylose. The effect upon the nutrition of the cornea is good. Owing to the diminution of the intraocular pressure, the fusion of the fluid through the cornea is facilitated and the uh, whole of the pressure is actually relieved. So, yes, patient will have um, the relief of the symptoms. Pain will be alleviated. Cicatrization is also proceeding rapidly and um, the complications which follow. The perforation are, however, extremely danger to the sight as well as the preservation of the eye. So, if you look uh, with respect to the symptoms, patient is relieved because whole of the uh, intraocular pressure is relieved now. But yes, if you look at the uh, visual recovery as a whole, then this is very, very guarded. It is having a danger to the sight as well as the, there is a problem in the preservation of the eye. These complications vary according to the position as well as the size of perforation. Now, usually the perforation takes place opposite to some part of the iris. If this perforation is small, then what is happening? Iris becomes gummed down to the opening and um, that forms a opacity called as the adherent leukoma. Suppose uh, you have this um, cornea here and uh, we were having this iris and this is the length and we are having a perforation in this area. So, if you have perforation in this area, suppose we take the normal color of the iris, this was your brown in color. So, this iris will now go and it will lead to the sealing of this corneal ulcer like this. But obviously, now this area is having the iris. So, this will not be transparent. So, this area will be leading to what? So, this area will be leading to something called as adherent, adherent leukoma. So, this will be called as the adherent leukoma, something like this. So, if you are having something like this, what is happening? The adhesion organizes to form a layer of the scar tissue over this adherent iris. This is also called a pseudocornea. So, this blocking of the perforation with the iris allows the anterior ch chamber to be reformed. Anterior chamber has reformed, but definitely um, if you look at the um, transparency of the cornea within that area, it will be hampered. This area will not be transparent now. But okay, it's a small perforation. We can go on with it. On the other hand, if the perforation is large, now the portion of the iris not only going into the opening, but it is also coming out. Then this is leading to the prolapse of the iris. Can you see the whole of the iris is now coming out? So you can see an area which is coming out. So there is a difference between adherent leukoma where iris is just sealing the um, perforation and another thing is when it is coming out. That is your uh, prolapse of the iris. The color of the iris also gets obscured by the gray or yellow exudates but eventually iris stroma becomes thin and the black pigmentary epithelium becomes visible. Then we have secondary glaucoma. These are all the complications of mainly bacterial corneal ulcer. If the prolapse of the iris has occurred, uh, prolapse ke baad, there is a cicatrization and um, all the exudates get organized. They form a layer of connective tissue. There is a contraction of the bends. Now, these bends are contracting. See, when the iris is coming out, iris prolapse, it is bringing the exudates along with it. When we have the arrangement of these exudates, exudates are always covered by the fibrous tissue and fibrous tissue always contracts. So, this contraction will actually tending to flatten this prolapse. Okay. So, if this iris is becoming uh, flattened, 
This can actually lead to the secondary glaucoma because flattening of the iris will lead to the malformation of the angle. We know that the angle of anterior chamber is actually made up of five structures. So one of them is the root of the iris. So obviously if the shape of the iris is disturbed, we can have glaucoma. Then uh, a thing called as tephyloma, which is also important, anterior tephyloma, which is found as a in the uh, as a sequelae or as a complication of a large corneal perforation. So this is a ectatic cicatrix in which the iris is incarcerated, and this is called as an anterior tephyloma. The bands of the scar tissue um, on the tephyloma they may vary in the breadth and the thickness. And um, they are actually producing a, this lobulated like appearance. This is called as the anterior stephyloma. If you look at um, the histopathological aspect in which the iris tissue is completely, you know, enmeshed in the corneal tissue, uh, you can also have scarring. So what they are saying that if there is whole of uh, the cornea is perforated, we were having the iris here, we were having the aqueous humor, here we were having the aqueous humor, here we were having the lens. Now when there is a total perforation, so whole of this area is going out. Now after this what is happening, we have um, aqueous humor, something like this. So whole of it is uh, coming out. So what it is doing, it is dragging the iris lens diaphragm towards the outer side. So we have the iris here, this lens is also coming here and then we have the exudates arranged here. These are the inflammatory cells. Now, due to the organization of the inflammatory cells, we will have the fibrous tissue. So, this. So, we have two layers, pseudocornea and the false cornea is formed and we have the lobulated appearance. So, this lobulated appearance is actually called as the staphyloma. So, from where we have got this word staphyloma, staphyloma word which has come from the bunch of grapes appearance, staphylose. Then the other things that we can have is anterior capsular cataract. If the perforation happens to be opposite the pupil. Suppose uh, what is happening? The perforation is exactly opposite the pupil, something like this. Here you have the perforation. So what it will go, it can go and touch this anterior surface of the lens capsule. So what is happening? This iris becomes adherent to the edges and aperture will be filled with the exudate. And uh, what is happening there, the lens can come in contact with this ulcer and therefore it will have an anterior capsular cataract. So most of the places usually we have a posterior capsular cataract. But if you are having a perforation just in this area, so this uh, lens can come in contact with the ulcer. Then it is called as an anterior capsular cataract. Then I can have a corneal fistula. That is a new chamber, abnormal uh, passage that is established as the anterior chamber reforms, exudate which is filling the opening is submitted to strain frequently ruptures the process may be repeated so that the opening may become permanent then if uh, corneal perforation remains uh, for a long time that opening may remain as a corneal fistula also sometimes all of the cornea slurs and then whole of the iris could be coming out if whole of the iris is coming out it is something like this this is your iris and uh, this iris is coming out here. This was your iris and this is called as the iris prolapse. In the smaller one, we have aberrant leucoma. In the larger one, we can have iris prolapse. Uh, we, then I told you we can have a false cornea. We can have a pseudocornea. We can have anterior stephyloma. We can have the spontaneous expulsion of the lens and vitreous. How it is taking place? If uh, perforation is so, so sudden that all, you know, your ciliary zonules are stretched. So when they are stretched, they can be going anteriorly. Why? Because whole of the aqueous humor is going uh, anteriorly. The pressure is towards that side. So the suspensory ligaments are stretched or they are ruptured and therefore there is anterior dislocation of the lens and vitreous. Then we can also have a hemorrhage, sudden reduction. If there is, that will dilate the intraocular blood vessels and that rupture can cause the intraocular hemorrhage. Uh, though it's not very common, but yes, hemorrhage is one of the last stages. If you are started having the hemorrhage after the anterior stephyloma, there is a very, very guarded prognosis. Then I can um, uh, even expect that uh, if it is so profuse that the contents of the globe are extruded out, that will be called as expulsive choroidal hemorrhage also. Finally, the organisms which have caused the ulceration of the cornea may again access into the rest of the eye. We can have purulent iridocyclitis, anophthalmitis, panophthalmitis. So, 
this is you know the very last if uh, the corneal uh, keratitis has led to a state where it's going to iridocyclitis not only iridocyclitis purulent iridocyclitis and then uh, within no time it can go to the endophthalmitis and even the panophthalmitis so a small thing a corneal ulcer which started with a very small ulcer uh, may reach into the purulent exudation in whole of the eyeball and the dangerous complications of endophthalmitis and panophthalmitis uh, so this will help you in solving so many questions because every paper will give you the questions on keratitis and especially the bacterial keratitis and plus the differentiation between the bacterial and fungal keratitis is very very important. So for this session we will keep it um, from up to uh, here only and in the next session then we will be trying to read this uh, treatment of the corneal ulcers. So wait for the next session till then goodbye thank you and happy ophthalmology.